what happens when we connect a DC supply to a transformer. Now this is a very common question between the students and also very frequently asked question in the technical interviews. Now in this video what we are going to do is uh, we will be connecting a DC supply to a transformer in a circuit simulation and from that simulation we are going to identify some of the interesting things that happens when we connect a DC supply to a transformer. And if you are interested in making things crystal clear in that situation, then you need to watch the video. So let us first understand this very basic circuit that we have here. We have a AC supply of 200 volts. Now I've kept rest of the things as a default. So frequency is one kilohertz. Then to measure the current that is flowing through the primary, we have connected an ammeter in series with it. Then we have a switch here. Here is our transformer. It's one is to one transformer. Now, what does that mean? That means if we are going to give 200 volt as uh, input to the primary, you will be getting 200 volt as output in the secondary. That transformer we call it as one is to one transformer. Now this I have kept it just for simplicity purpose. Now it can have a step up transformer, step down transformer. The result will be the same, right? So this is one is to one transformer. Then to check whether we are having any output at the secondary, we have connected a voltmeter in series with that. And as a load, we have a simple lamp connected to it. Now what we I will be doing right here is I'm going to run this simulation and then see now it's a basic AC supply. So there won't be any issue right here. So here we have started the simulation. The current is flowing through the primary. Now you notice the primary current is just 4 milliampere, just 4 milliampere, right? And at the secondary, we have the voltage output and our light has started blinking, right? This is the perfect normal situation. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to change this AC supply to the DC supply. So voltage also we will be making 200 here. So just uh, like what we had. Now here I have made it 200 volts. Now let's see what happens here. So here you can see we have started the uh, simulation. First thing that you must notice is the primary current. You see the primary current is now 2 kilo ampere, 2000 ampere. So you imagine the initial when we connected AC supply, the primary current was somewhere around 4 milliampere and now it is 2 kilo ampere. So huge increase in the current. Now why is that? We are going to talk about that in this video. So make sure you watch the video till the end. So this is first observation that the primary current has gone up very high. The second observation is that there is no output at the secondary. You see the bulb is not glowing, right? So there is no output at the secondary. This is observation number two. Why is that? We'll talk about that in the coming uh, uh, slides. Now you notice here we are going to do one interesting thing. Now there is a switch here. Now I'm going to open this switch. Now the moment we open the switch, you notice what happens. See, the bulb was turned down for a very short time and there is a voltage spike here. You see? This is the voltage spike. Now, why is that there was a output at a very for a very brief moment and in the secondary. And the bulb was also glowing for a very brief time and there is a voltage spike here. So that means there was an output for a brief moment of time at the secondary. Now, why is that happening? We are going to talk about that in detail. All the three observations we will be talking. But before that, if you are if you want to make your transformer related concepts crystal clear, then you must check out the course that I have on the transformer. It is already helping many students and I'm 100% sure that if you want to make your concepts crystal clear, then this is the only course that you need. The videos are short and crisp so that you can grasp the things very easily and very quickly. And this is going to make all the concepts related to transformer crystal clear. So definitely go and check it out. I'll provide link for that down in the description. Now let us talk about the three observations, three main observations that we had. So first is the excessive primary current. Now why is that? So let us talk about the two scenarios. The first scenario was when we gave the AC supply. 
Now, when we gave the AC supply, we know that the current in the primary can be calculated using current is equals to voltage divided by impedance. Now, impedance is really an important term in AC circuits. Now, impedance is what impedance is basically the combination of all the oppositions that is offered to the AC supply. So it can be resistance, it can be, you know, inductive reactance XL or it can be capacitive reactance XC. So everything put together is what is our impedance. Now I have a dedicated video on that. I'll provide a link for that uh, um, in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So that is the impedance and the current depends upon the impedance. Clear? And uh, the inductive reactance or capacitive reactance, they are dependent upon the frequency. So for example, the inductive reactance is given by XL is equals to 2 pi F. L, where F is the frequency and L is the inductance of the inductor. So definitely the value of XL depends upon the frequency. Same thing goes for the capacitance uh, XC. It depends upon the frequency, but it is inversely dependent on the frequency. And that is the reason why you saw the current flowing in the primary side when we connected AC supply was very, very minimum. It was in milliampere, right? because there was a frequency and there was inductive reactance, there was capacitive reactance and everything put together, there was an impedance. Clear? So that is situation one. The second situation when we connected a DC supply to the transformer. Now in DC supply, the only parameter that comes into picture is a resistance, right? Since there is no frequency, there won't be any inductive reactance or there won't be any capacitive reactance. So these two things will not be there in case of DC supply. So the only opposition that current will have is resistance. And in that case, the current can be given as current is equals to voltage divided by resistance. And when we talk about transformer, the winding resistance of transformer is very, very minimum. And that is logical also because if you put uh, winding with higher resistance, you are going to have I square R losses, right? And that is not desirable. So for that purpose, the winding resistance of the transformer is very, very minimum. And definitely minimum resistance means a high current because there is no other opposition offered to the current than this minimum resistance. And that is the reason why you saw the current went up to 2 kilo ampere when we connected the DC supply and that is huge current. The transformer primary winding is not meant to carry this high current. Clear? So if this current is going to flow continuously through the transformer, there will be overheating of the coil, overheating of the winding and that is going to burn that winding out. The transformer will burst if you keep giving that supply continuously to the transformer. So very dangerous situation and hence you must not connect any DC supply to the transformer, right? And it also depends upon the voltage source that you are connecting to the transformer. Let's say if you are connecting a, a 5 volt DC to a 500 MVA transformer, it's not going to have any impact, right? So it depends upon the transformer rating and the voltage source, a DC voltage source that you are going to connect to the transformer. It, it depends upon that, right? So that is the first observation we had the excessive primary current. And why is that? That we have understood just now. So now let us talk about the second observation that we had is no secondary output. Now, why is that? We, we saw that in the secondary when we connected a DC supply, the voltmeter was reading zero volts. Why is that? Let us try to understand. Now, to understand this, we first must understand the principle on which the transformer operates. And transformer operates on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which says that if a coil is subjected to the changing magnetic field, a voltage will be induced in that coil. Now, the amount of voltage that is getting induced in that coil will depend upon the speed at which the magnetic field is rotating. Right. So the one thing is very clear that to, you know, generate output at secondary, we must have a changing magnetic field. Right. 
now this changing magnetic field you can get either by you know changing the speed of the if you have the magnet you can just rotate the magnet to have the changing magnetic field or you can rotate the coil both way it is fine but when we talk about transformer now transformer is a static device and it is very very heavy uh, huge in size so definitely you cannot rotate the transformer right so that option is not a valid option actually then the second option remains is that you either vary the magnetic flux and that can happen when the supply is ac only now ac we know that in ac supply the voltage is changing the current is changing it goes to the positive then it goes to the negative again uh, uh, zero then again positive zero negative zero and positive so it is changing it is constantly changing and that is the reason why the voltage is available across the secondary in case of ac supply clear but when we talk about the dc supply the dc supply is constant in nature it do not change uh, with time right so what uh, dc is going to do dc is going to produce a constant magnetic field right it will definitely produce a magnetic field but that will be constant in nature it's not going to have a alternating magnetic field like ac and as we have seen that transformer needs a changing magnetic field to have output at the secondary but since the dc is go is only giving us a constant magnetic field it is going to give a zero output at the secondary clear that is the second observation why no secondary output because the magnetic field produced by the dc will be constant in nature and that will not help us to have any secondary output because to have the secondary output we need to have changing magnetic field as per the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction clear why there is no secondary output this is the reason now the third observation that we had when we turned off the switch there was a sudden voltage spike and the bulb was also lighted for a very sh a short amount of time and the same thing also happens when you close the switch you will see there will be a output at secondary and the bulb will glow yes that happens now why is that happens so let's say we have a dc supply connected to the transformer and you have a switch okay now you are you have switched on the switch and the current will start flowing now how it will flow will it go like this immediately no it will not go like this so when you turn on the switch this is how the volt a uh, waveform will build so it will build like this it when you turned on the switch now it has gone to the constant level so it will start from zero then let's say it will go to the 5 ampere and then the constant 5 ampere will flow through the circuit but when it it was starting you see it has increased from 0 to 5 ampere gradually now there is no sudden change that will happen it will increase gradually and gradually increasing means the magnetic field produced by this particular portion will be changing right a small change will be there and as a result you will find some output at the secondary and that is the reason why the bulb was uh you know lighted for a very brief amount of time the same thing happens when you turned off the switch same thing happens when you turn on the switch when you turn on the switch uh, and the dc is connected a short output will be available across the secondary now this depends upon the voltage source that you are connecting the resistance of the transformer and you know other characteristics of the transformer there will be a output available Uh, for a brief amount of time at the secondary but slowly it will start decaying it will start decaying and after some time it will go to the zero the situation that we saw initially will be reached so zero output now when this question is being asked to you that what happens to a transformer uh, when a dc supply is connected to it well you can give the answer that there will be a short spike available at the output initially and then it will go to the zero level plus if you keep that supply connected continuously to the transformer the primary winding will burn the transformer will burst right 
and the output of course definitely will be zero but there will be a voltage spike initially and then slowly it will go to the zero level right so these are the three main observation three interesting things that happens when you connect to the connect a dc supply to the transformer the bottom line is ideally you should not connect any dc supply to the transformer the situation is not uh, very user friendly it's a dangerous situation so definitely you must avoid that right i hope this explanation helped you in understanding uh, what happens when we connect dc supply to the transformer very clearly if this video was helpful then do share this video with your friends with the people you might think would be interested in knowing this fact do support the channel by subscribing it it really helps the channel to grow further thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video but till then make sure you keep watching and you keep learning Thank you.